Hello and welcome back to the Van Kopp classroom. Um, today we're going to be discussing orbifolds, um, which are related to symmetries and translations, which we've been studying as part of geometry. Um, I like orbifolds um, because they are an entirely visual mathematical concept. Um, there are definitions, but I find that the definitions are actually more confusing uh, than just visually um, observing uh, the orbifold patterns. Uh, so with that, we're going to jump right in. Um, so what is an orbifold? Uh, so it's a pattern created by moving a singular pattern piece through translations. Um, so we're going to produce an entire picture essentially from one small element. Uh, so the first part of orbifolds um, that we're going to look at are rotations. Um, so the figure below uh, is actually an example of an orbifold rotation. Um, so, but we should notice that there's many ways to define this rotation. So the goal with orbifolds, if we remember the definition, is we're looking for the smallest possible reproducible segment. So in our picture here with you know six dots in our figure, um, we actually have one piece which is being rotated to six different positions around our picture. Um, we should notice though uh, that six isn't the you know six isn't the magical rotation number, right? So we could have rotations that have n many um, n many rotational symmetries. So just keep that in mind. Um, our second element will be re reflections. Um, so these function very much the same as as rotations, uh, or sorry, as uh, geometric reflections. Um, so we should notice that uh, in our reflection that the pieces closest to the line, like our right angle here, will appear closest to the line as reflected um, in our in our final figure. Um, consequently, again, furthest from the line, reflected furthest from the line. Slides, or um, also what we call just translations in, in geometry, are just moving the figure from one spot to the next, where its orientation doesn't change at all, right? So this is different than a reflection. This is different than a rotation. So in the following few examples, um, I just uh, would like you to find the orbifold pattern. Um, so yeah. I'll give you a, a few seconds to, to make your answers, and then we'll go over each. So in this first pattern, um, we actually, it's, uh, it's a reflection pattern. Um, so it's reflecting in two ways, right? So it's reflecting down and it's down and it's reflecting across. Um, people are often tempted to say this is a rotational pattern uh, made by rotating this 180 degrees. Uh, however, with the overlap that exists of the noses of these figures, um, the rotation, you can't, it's very hard to designate a piece which actually rotates. So this is a flower wallpaper. So this pattern is, uh, it, it also has almost like a special name. Um, so it's just the uh, compounding of two of the uh, relationships we saw previously. So this is what we call a slide reflection. Um, so this single flower bouquet is slid forward um, and then is reflected upon its axis, right? So this reflects here. This reflects here. This is in contrast, right, to a reflection across like this axis, right, which would also work. So again, these are reflections. 
But recall that we want the smallest possible pattern, which is actually, which includes portions of this line, right? But is not necessarily more than just one half of this. Uh, this is then reflected, right? Or rotated 180 degrees over a point. Um, so this pattern actually, um, it's a little trickier. So given these, I call them triforce symbols, right? We have two pairs, right? We have a three white, and then we have a similar three black symbol that we need to recreate, uh, which means that we need both a white triangle and a black triangle in our final pattern. Um, you could say this reflects this way. Uh, it could also be a rotation, right, around a point. This rotates to this figure. And we'll find that pretty commonly with orbifolds, that there will be multiple uh, ways that we can uh, denote what pattern has actually occurred. Uh, so we bring up the topic of orbifolds because it's a fairly common occurrence um, just in your in your daily activities, uh, think of like any geometric pattern that you come into contact with, um, not just for decorations but also for functions. Uh, so one that pops into my head uh, that dominated my childhood was quilting squares. Uh, we had tons of quilts as a child, and you still see uh, patterns of all different kinds. So. Uh, in this case, we have a rotation pattern or a reflection pattern, right? Could be reflected across this axis. Uh, the clover is a rotational pattern. Um, so we did wallpapers, we have quilting squares, um, but there are a myriad of other possibilities. Um, see if you can come up with five other patterns that use orbifold type techniques. And that will complete um, our lesson for today. Uh, please visit the Van Cop classroom again.